Hey, what's up guys? This is Greg from ASUS, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up dual M.2 drives in RAID 0 as a boot disk. Now one of the cool features of Z270 when you use it with a 7th generation Intel Core CPU is that you have increased PCIe lanes. And most of our Z270 boards have dual M.2 PCIe slots. So I thought it'd be fun to get a couple of M.2 drives, put them in RAID 0, and see what kind of transfer speeds we can get. The system I'll be using for this demo is the Z270 gaming system that I recently built in a video. If you haven't seen that video, you can go ahead and check it out right here. The drives I'll be using are the Corsair MP500 240GB SSDs. When installing the M.2 drives, be sure to use the standoffs and screws that come with the motherboard. You also need to remove the protective cover from the M.2 mounting point you're going to be using. Once the standoff is in, you can go ahead and install the M.2 drive itself. Make sure you check the notch on the drive to be sure you're putting it in the right way, and then just attach it with the included screw. And do the same thing for the other one. All right, so we've got both drives in. Now I'll just pop the graphics card back in, turn it on, we're ready to go. Once you boot the system, go ahead and hit delete or F2 to enter the BIOS. Once you're in the BIOS, you want to go over to the advanced tab, and then go down to select onboard devices configuration. Here, we'll go ahead and make sure that the first M.2 slot is set to PCIe rather than SATA. By default, it's in auto mode, which should be fine, but I usually just like to be sure it's in PCIe mode. And then we go down to the second M.2 slot settings, and we'll change it from X2 to X4 to make sure we're using the maximum amount of bandwidth available. Next, to set up the RAID volume, go ahead and hit F11 that will bring you to the Easy Tuning Wizard. And hit Tab, and then use the arrow keys to switch between overclocking and RAID setup mode. You can also navigate this menu by using the mouse. First thing you're asked is if you want to switch from AHCI to RAID, go ahead and click on the Yes button or navigate to it with the arrow keys and hit Enter. Then it wants to double check, make sure you really want to enable RAID, go ahead and hit Enter. Then the system will restart, and when it comes back, you'll be back to the Easy Tuning Wizard menu. Here you can select between PCIe or SATA RAID. Of course, we'll want to select PCIe. On this next screen, you want to double check and make sure that the available storage drives are the ones that you want to use. And on this screen is where we choose between the type of RAID that we want to use, either striped or mirrored. We want to go for striped, so we'll choose super speed. Mirrored is displayed as easy backup. So we'll go ahead and select super speed and click next. And here we can get into the specific type of RAID we want to use. Since we're only using two drives, RAID 0 is the only option we can choose. But if you were to use more drives, you could do RAID 5. So let's go ahead and click next. Now it's displaying the drives that we're going to use for our RAID array. Just want to double check those, make sure that they're the correct ones. Go ahead and click yes. Gives you another warning that, that uh, all data will be permanently erased. So we'll go ahead and click yes. And we should be good to go. So once we hit yes here, it should restart the system. OK. So the next thing we're going to do is install Windows 10. And one thing to remember when installing Windows on a RAID array is that you need to download the Intel Rapid Storage Technology drivers first and put them on a flash drive. So that way you can load them during the installation process. Otherwise, Windows won't recognize the RAID set. Um, so for me, I usually use two drives, one with Windows on it and the other one with the drivers. Okay, so when you get to this point on the Windows installation, you want to go ahead and select Custom Install, since it's going to be a fresh install. And you'll notice that our RAID array that we've set up is not listed. The drive listed here is just the two terabyte drive that we have in there for extra storage. So you're going to need to make sure you have that flash drive in with the Intel RST drivers, and click Load Driver, and then Browse. Select the flash drive that has the drivers on it, and go ahead and navigate to the folder that contains the drivers, and hit OK. And it looks like it found the driver, so we'll just go ahead and hit Next, and then that will install the driver. So once the driver has installed, then the RAID array should show up as an available disk to install Windows on. So we'll just go ahead and click that drive, and then hit Next, and Windows is installing. After installing Windows, I've gone back into the BIOS to check the boot order. The easiest way to do this is to press F7 to go into the easy mode. And it looks like it's already configured to boot from the RAID array. If I had multiple devices, they would be listed here, and I would be able to just drag and drop them to change the boot order. Let's go ahead and boot into Windows. To do that, we'll just hit F8 and Enter. So now that Windows is installed, I'm going to go ahead and run a couple of quick benchmarks. First up is ATTO. This normally takes a few minutes, but I've sped up the results in the interest of time. Next up is Crystal Disk Mark. 
Wow, so we got some pretty impressive results overall. On ATTO, we're looking at well over 3,400 megabyte per second read and just touching 3,400 megabyte per second write. So that's pretty darn good. That's pretty much maxing out the DMI connection between the chipset and the CPU. So if you want to go any faster than that, you'll probably have to go with X99. Um, so I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.